Welcome to my top 10 most anticipated and noteworthy comics for April 3rd, 2024. Guys, I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. It's never too early to start that pull list for next week, and hopefully this list does help you make decisions on what comic books to buy. So before we dive into it, guys, I just gotta give a quick shout out to Whatnot. If you guys are not familiar with Whatnot, well, it's a live auction site. And there is a link in my description box below. When you click on that link, create your profile and win your first auction on Whatnot, you'll get $15 credit off of that first auction. It's absolutely for free. There's no cost to you. Just use that link in the description box below. So whether you're a collector of comics or not, there you go. Free 15 bucks. Can't beat it. All right, guys. So here we go. The book that's on the hot seat. We have Deadpool. This is issue one. This is a new error uh, for the Merc without the mouth. Uh, we have... Cody Ziegler, who's writing this book. So he's currently also writing Miles Morales' Spider-Man. And uh, I'm not a huge Deadpool guy when it comes to the character in, in the comic books, right? I just feel like he's annoying. Sometimes the jokes are forced. And it's just like almost like how Harley Quinn is right now. So we'll see what this book has to offer, how Cody Ziegler writes the character here. 40 pages. This one is $5. All right, so here's the book that's on the rise. You guys are going to laugh at this one. This is the Sensational She-Hulk issue 7. The last issue was a lot of fun for me. We got to see uh, Sensational She-Hulk, Jennifer Walters go on vacation with the Jack of Hearts, and now there's become this love triangle. But what I liked about the last issue was that Jen was more like Jen, right? She got excited about things. I like how she interacted with different people. She interacted with a character from Jack of Hearts past and it wasn't just a book about Jennifer Walters being stuck in an apartment the entire series right and it just got her in a different environment the art was better just all around a better issue so I'm looking forward to this next one the legacy numbering here is issue 185 28 pages and this one's four dollars here we go number 10 Batman issue 146. We got the continuation as Zer and R. Uh, it's not the best story, but when you put uh, Jorge Jimenez's artwork in the book, it actually looks really good. We get to see at least the Bat family in this book, and they're trying to distinguish if Batman's consciousness is in this robot or if it's somebody else. Uh, it's The last issue was okay, right? But I think people are getting tired of Failsafe and the Zurin R character overall, but we'll see how the story continues to develop. Like Legacy numbering 911, 40 pages, $5. Moving on to number nine, we have X-Men. This is issue 33. I just watched the X-Men 97 first two episodes, and that is in place of uh, after the pool this week just because I loved those first two episodes. It just brought me back to my childhood, and it's the best X-Men thing going right now. X-Men main title is just kind of a little bit all over the place for me um, again it's connected to the whole fall of x thing the last issue we got to see iliana and kitty pride uh team up to try to take down orcus in there we got lockheed back every issue is a, something with a little bit different so i really don't know what to expect from this issue so this one's 28 pages four dollars Coming in at number eight, we have a bunch of new issue ones and in indies this week. We got Red Coat issue one uh, series premiere. So this guy is like immortal. He has lived through, uh, I don't know how long, right? He's seen people come, he's seen people go. And uh, I read portion of this in that little previews book from Ghost Machine. And it seemed like an interesting concept here. So I'm definitely gonna check this one out. And this one is 34 pages and this one is $4. Coming in at number seven, we have The Last Mermaid, issue two. This book was actually really good about literally this last mermaid that 
is alive, supposedly, and she's in search for water. And the only reason why she is alive is she has this mech that has water inside of it, but she's, but she's in desperate need of finding new water to change it because the toxic, toxicity level is super high. She has this little like tadpole creature with her at the same time, and at the end, it looked like she was about to die and she saw something. Whether it was a mermaid tail or a plant life, we're still yet to see what that is. But regardless, whether it is a mermaid or if it's plant life, that means there's water somewhere, right? Very interesting book. Not a lot of dialogue, but that was okay because the artwork was gorgeous. $4 on this book. Coming in at number six, we have Geiger. This is issue one so new volume for geiger now a lot of us know who the geiger character is where he came from obviously if you did not know who he was we did get to see a little bit of a story again in that ghost machine uh preview uh and i'm looking forward to this next volume you can't you cannot deny the artwork from Gary Frank here, and Jeff Johns is the writer of this one. So when it comes to all these Ghost Machine comic books, you know, obviously just do what you do with every other comic book. Read the number one, give it a couple issues if you need to, see which ones you like out of the new imprints. So this one is 32 pages, and this one is $4. All right, same thing from Ghost Machine. Coming in at number five, we have Rook exodus issue one so a lot of people said that this guy is like um like a star lord knockoff and i when i read the preview i was kind of most interested with this one because these characters re uh wear these specific helmets right and it has to they like control animals with these helmets and they're on this planet where they have to terraform it uh i thought it was a pretty interesting concept i'm looking forward to this issue and we'll see what happens with it so this one is 48 pages and this one is four dollars okay here we go coming in at number four we have another new number one this time it's a spider-man comic this is spider-man shadow of the green goblin this is issue one so this one is written by um jm demetis and supposedly there was this goblin before the original green goblin called the proto goblin so who knows man i don't know what to expect but this is the early days of a spider-man story i'm looking forward to it anything that's not amazing spider-man i guess i'm looking forward to right now 40 pages and this one is five dollars here we go coming in at number three and coming in at that top three spot is the sacrificers issue seven so we get the return of rick remender's uh story here where we had a bunch of kids that seemed like they were going to this better place and they wound up getting their brain juices extracted from them to power the gods right and we got to see everyone get killed except basically one of them and we wind up seeing one of the gods daughter escape as well uh it's kind of like where it ended up i don't know what they're going to do with the next story arc but hopefully it keeps up i really enjoyed it it made a huge impact especially those first few issues man so this one is four dollars Coming in at number two, we have always a great book. This is Gunslinger Spawn. This is issue, uh, where are we at on this one? Issue 30? I don't think I have a description for this one. But nevertheless, it's a great book. We got to see, I think, in the last issue, kind of what is going on with Javier after the dead zones, right, have expanded. And they've expanded so much that all the Spawn characters, all of the angels, anybody that's in that Spawn universe is all depowered. And Javier got severely injured in the whole thing that was going on previously, and he's kind of healing trying to heal from his wounds, but he's healing like a human, not like a Spawn. He's most he has teamed up with an unlikely ally uh if you read the last issue and they're going out on an adventure together and javier needs this ally because he's illiterate he's not aware of how modern day earth works so i really like that we'll see what happens 24 pages three dollars 
Okay, guys, so remember, after number one, we're not done as we have the noteworthy comic books to talk about because there are 10 books on here that I mentioned, but you know, you don't know what some of the other books are coming out. So I gotta mention the noteworthy books, right? That don't make my top 10 most anticipated. So with that being said, my number one most anticipated for this week goes to Void Rivals, issue eight. We got Derek and Salilla. Uh, they're going face to face against this new like bounty hunter character by the name of Proximus. We got to see him get initiated into the comic book from the leader in the last issue so i thought that was really cool and we get to see our main characters escaping from this wasteland area um pretty cool man i mean you can't deny void rivals i think it's really cool it kicked off the energon universe i want to see how it continues to connect to the energon universe and uh yeah if you haven't read it yet go out check it out the first trade is out it covers the first six issues and it just came back last month so this is 32 pages and this one is four dollars here we go noteworthy comic books we always kick it off with marvel here and the first marvel book i'm talking about is venom issue 32 carnage is in that book those books are crossing over pretty action-packed book right now then we have The Immortal Thor. This is issue nine. Not reading this comic, but a pretty badass looking cover. Next, we have The Avengers. This is issue 12. Looks like these guys are gonna be teaming up with the X-Men to defeat Orcus in the near future, if not in this issue, because Iron Man's here. All right, and then we have Star Wars. We have issue 45. We have the continuation of Doctor Strange. This is issue 14. Followed by Vengeance of Moon Knight, issue four. Then we have Captain America. This is issue eight. Moving on to DC Comics now. We have Poison Ivy, issue 21. We have Birds of Prey, issue eight. I want to know in the comments below, what are you guys are thinking of Birds of Prey? I dropped it out after issue three. It just wasn't doing it for me. Hasn't it improved since then? Then we have Shazam. This is issue 10. New creative team on Shazam. I don't think I'll be picking this up, but if you guys like this, this issue, let me know when it comes out. Then we have Blue Beetle. This is issue 8. Followed by Suicide Squad Kill Arkham Asylum issue 3. Then we have Kneel Before Zod. This is issue 4. Then we have a, a solid title here, Superman 78, The Metal Curtain, Issue 6. For the all ages out there, we have The Batman and Scooby-Doo Mysteries. This is Issue 4. Moving on to those indie comics, we have the continuation of The Walking Dead Deluxe. This is Issue 86. Any of you guys out there reading The Walking Dead for the first time, let me know in the comments below. Then we have Grim issue 16, written by Stephanie Phillips. We have Love Everlasting, issue 14, followed by Crave, issue 5. For the Power Ranger fans out there, we have Godzilla vs. the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2, issue 1. For the Turtle fans, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday Morning Adventures April Special. This is issue 1. Then we have Hack and Slash, Kill Your Idols. This is issue one, celebrating 20 years of the character. So there you guys have it. There are the most anticipated and noteworthy comics already for April 3rd, 2024. I want to know in the comments below, of course, what are you most excited for? And if you guys love my content, there's more content right here. In fact, this is my thoughts on that X-Men 97 first two issues, my reaction video. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that. And as always, guys, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting, but always remember, read your comics. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye.